Our next, question, our next uh, presentation is from Giacomo Ortiz, PhD student um, at the University of Padova. Um, he has worked on honeybees and grasshoppers, and he's now going to shed some more light on how increasing temperatures affect the life cycle of Barbitistis visitinus. Giacomo. So, good morning, and uh, my presentation uh, regards uh, how increasing uh, temperatures can affect the life cycle of the outbreak Bascricat Bas Barbitistes vicettinus. Okay, Bas Barbitistes uh, vicettinus is uh, an ensifera species uh, described very early in 1993 as uh, an endemic of the northeast of Italy. Uh, in particular, it uh, can be found in, uh, in the Lessinia Mountains, in the Barichunganian Hills, and it was found in a valley of Trentino region. It was considered as a rare species confined to forest areas, and because of its small distributional range, is it also considered as an early treatment in the IUCN Red List. So this species, uh, it was considered rare until uh, 2008, when the first outbreaks uh, appears in the southern uh, distribution range, that are the Oganian Hills, first uh, uh, located in some areas, but uh, in the subsequent year affecting all the hillside area. So these species uh, can uh, shift from uh, a solitary form uh, with a typical green coloration to, to an to an outbreaking form with a typical aposematic coloration, and this is typical also for the, for the genus Barbitistes. So during outbreaks, uh, these species can cause uh, severe damages to forest trees, although also able to affect uh, cultivated crops such as uh, vineyards, olive grove, and cherry orchards. I want to have now a focus on the life cycle of the species because it's very different compared to the life cycle of other species. In fact, the nymphs appear at the end of March and the adults start to lay eggs in the ground for the entire June. So an egg can hatch in the year following the reposition or can remain in the soil for several years after resuming development and hatch. So to date, uh, we demonstrated that uh, an egg of Barbitisus vetino can stay in the ground for at least uh, three years uh, uh, after uh, hatching. So uh, we choose uh, uh, to investigate how temperature can affect the diapose and the survival of this pest. So as, as I said, an egg can stay in the ground for several years in a state that is called initial diapose where there's arrested development in the early embryonic stage. And uh, instead, when the embryo starts to develop, it can reach the final diapose stage where the embryogenesis is complete and the embryo occupies the wall egg space. So an egg in the, in, will hatch in the following uh, spring after overwintering in the final diapose stage. So, our aims was to test the effect of uh, summer temperatures on uh, egg development, because uh, egg development occurs uh, uh, often during uh, the warm period, so during summer, and was to test also the effect of uh, winter temperatures on survivals, that means uh, on the hatchings uh, uh, in the spring. So to respond to these questions, we carried out two different experiments, one during the summer and one during the winter. Here uh, in this table, I resumed the methodology for the summer experiment. So we replicated the, this experiment during two different summers. And um, this experiment work, was carried out uh, both in the field and in the lab. So for the field, we choose uh, 21 sites along an elevation gradient uh, to detect, uh, to detect the sites with different uh, temperature. And, um, 
In each site, uh, we put uh, 200 eggs of Larbitistus vicetinus coupled uh, with a, a data logger inside the soil to detect temperature. And for comparative purposes, we put also the eggs uh, in uh, climatic chambers at constant temperature uh, along a gradient from 19 degrees to 24 degrees. So at the end uh, of the summer period, uh, wow. <coughs> uh, at the end of the summer, um, we retrieved all the eggs from the, from the lab. Um, we counted the eggs that were unviable, the eggs that were in initial diapause, so that didn't develop, and the eggs that, were, uh, that developed and reached the final diapose stage. And as you can see, an egg in the final diapose can be recognized uh, for the typical green coloration, and the black uh, uh, dot represented the height of the embryo. So uh, for the winter experiment, we carried out more or less the same experiment. So again, we choose uh, uh, sites along an elevation gradient. And uh, now we put uh, uh, in each site uh, 150 uh, eggs in the final diapose stage. So now we put only the eggs that uh, are able to hatch in the following spring. And uh, again, for comparative purposes, we uh, put the eggs uh, at constant temperatures in climatic chambers. So at the end of the winter period, we retrieve all the eggs from the field and from the lab, and uh, we counted uh, the hatchings for each site. So here are the results of, for the summer experiment. So uh, we replicated this experiment during two different years, and uh, we obtained the same results. So we put together all this data in one single graph. So uh, on the x-axis, we have the mean temperature of the summer period that went from 20 June to 31 of August, so the entire summer. And uh, on the y axis, we have the proportion of eggs that developed during the summer, so they reached the final diapose stage. And uh, as you can see, there is a strong effect of uh, summer temperatures. Uh, in fact, when mean temperatures are above 21 degrees, uh, nearly 90% of the eggs can, can develop and reach the final diapose. Instead, when mean temperature is under 19 degrees, only 20% of the eggs uh, uh, are able to develop. And uh, we found that uh, uh, the incubation of the eggs at constant temperatures allowed lower eggs to develop compared to the field condition. And this is maybe due to the effect of fluctuating temperatures in a natural condition. Uh, I also want to have a focus on this part because in only one degree of interval, so from 19.5 degrees to 20.5 degrees, there's a sharp increase in the number of eggs that can develop, so from 20% to 80% in only one degree of interval. So if we found an effect of the summer temperature on development, we didn't detect any effect of uh, winter temperatures on survival. So overwinter egg survival was uh, uh, high and constant among all the sites and uh, among all the temperatures tested. And uh, again, uh, the, the incubation of the eggs at constant temperatures allowed lower eggs to uh, hatch in the spring compared to the field conditions. So uh, to, to resume, uh, we found these uh, different response between the field and the constant temperatures. We didn't detect any effect of winter temperatures on survival of these species, but uh, we detect the strong effect of summer temperatures on, diapo on diapose. Um, so we can say that um, increasing temperatures can affect the life cycle of the species, uh, shifting uh, from a multi-year life cycle to an annual life cycle. It means that now, uh, with, the, with increasing temperatures, a huge amount of eggs can hatch in uh, only one summer after their reposition, uh, instead of remaining in the soil for several years. So um, we can say that uh, increasing temperatures due to climate change that we faced in the last decades could have contributed to the outbreaks of the species. And uh, I want also to say that uh, because for its small distributional range of the species, uh, also its conservation status should be considered because it can suddenly pass to a from an outbreak uh, status to a, a treatment status. 
I want to conclude uh, showing you that uh, the, the effect of uh, summer temperatures uh, affect also other Enciphera species. In fact, uh, I reared um, different Enciphera species, uh, and uh, he here are uh, a Phoridoptera schmitti and Phoridoptera phallax. And basically, I collect the eggs of these, these Enciphera. I put uh, these eggs along an elevation gradient with the data loggers, and uh, I obtained the, the the same results uh, the, as for Barbitista, so, so, so a lot of species uh, can shift the, 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 the life cycle with the increase in temperatures. And um, finally, I would to say that me this methodology could be useful to study the biology and the ecology of uh, Enciphera species and also to predict uh, their outbreak uh, risk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jacob. Questions? Nobody has a question. Is there online in the chat something? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Kustadina. Uh, I want to ask something, I don't know if it's you, but you said that, uh, from what I understand, that it affects it positively. We have outbreaks. So, if uh, the species has outbreaks and they decrease the population, how could we have a status of threatened in the future? That's my question. How can, we, how can it be threatened in the future if we have outbreaks? Okay. Uh, okay, forget. Well, so this species uh, was described very early, so before it was, uh, was very rare. No, no one can... Uh, see it. And uh, now, it, still now, so it outbreaks from 2008 uh, till, uh, till now, so now it is in an outbreak condition, but uh, mm, we can say that for its small distributional range, uh, maybe for environmental uh, factors such as, I don't know, a, a year of uh, draw, uh, a, it can suddenly uh, shift its abundance, and so it, uh, it can suddenly become uh, pass to a treatment status.